Well, hello, I am Lorenzo Piccinali. I am a senior lecturer here in design engineering. I, I'm actually new too, but I actually now it's, it's four years, so not that new anymore. And I'm also the director of undergraduate studies in, in this school. And I'm going to talk about uh, audio virtual reality uh, and some of the research we do in that area. Then we'll have a group of students talking more about um, future, future of audio and future of music. Now, the first thing that I'd like to discuss is about 3D sound. You probably have heard it a lot recently. In the last five, ten years, we talk a lot about virtual reality and spatial sound. Uh, and 3D sound is often a concept that is not very well understood. So, very briefly, when you have your stereo at home, you have two loudspeakers, you have sound sources on the left speaker, on the right, maybe in between. You have maybe a little bit of depth due to the interactions with the room and reverb. Uh, I don't know how many of you have a system like that at home. Uh, but when you go to the cinema, you usually have a lot of loudspeakers around you, a lot of sounds coming from all around you, and you turn it around, you hear the helicopter, the earthquake, and etc. Uh, at the same time, though, we have two ears. Uh, I've never seen someone like that. Actually, that exists as a, as a proper model. But uh, we only have two ears, left and right. So using so many channels uh, for delivering a signal that is then just received by two receivers, uh, what we can actually do is try to go straight to the receivers and emulate all what happens in the surrounding environment. So simulate uh, the acoustics of the environment, the interaction of our external hearing system, of the head, of the shoulders, the beard, the hair. These are actually things that all count into the way we perceive sound and go directly into a pair of headphones. And this is called binaural specialization. And binaural audio is the sort of research we do here. So uh, we try to understand how we localize sound sources, how we hear sound surrounding us. And with this understanding, we develop algorithms to simulate three-dimensional soundscapes with a simple pair of headphones. Uh, we can't try it, everyone. If I reproduce it through the loudspeaker, it's not going to work. But please come to talk to me later, and I can give you some demos. Now, virtual reality is something that, as I mentioned, the last 10 years, actually five years, everybody talks about it. Uh, you talk mainly about visual side of virtual reality, but recently we started talking about also the audio side of virtual reality, which is very interesting for me, obviously. But while we could see a future with people listening to sound, um, I think we all agree that a future like that is hopefully never going to exist. While a future like that already exists. People use headphones much more, actually. In the last 10 years, they started using it much more. I got a student last year who had a pair of headphones and he didn't even plug them to the phone. It was a fashion statement to have them around the neck. And this is obviously something I'm extremely happy about because the technologies that we develop are finally being used much more. And, and this pushed a lot our research. So what do we do uh, in the Dyson School in this area? Well, the first thing is to try to understand how humans localize sounds. And this is not a very simple task. There are very various mechanisms. Many actually, I mentioned before the beard, the hair, well, not so many here, but other people more. Uh, the shoulders, these are all elements that contribute to the way we localize sound source and that help us localizing source better or worse and create our own functions for localized sound sources. So we need to understand that. And with that knowledge, then we can develop new algorithms and models for creating a more immersive sound scene. So this is the basic research we carry out. And it's not as simple because it's not just, for example, the algorithmic side. I can simulate someone whispering here. Then I use the same simulation so you hear it really close to your ear. If you want to try it later, it's, it's very spooky. Uh, yeah, then try to use exactly the same simulation and put the sound of a thunder. No one hears it here. Everyone hears it three miles on top of us. Why? Because that's where we usually listen to a star thunder. No matter what kind of simulation I can create, you act with, or well, you, you reason with your memory, so you think, well, it's never going to be close to me. So when we do this kind of simulation, it's not just the algorithmic side, but the context of the scenarios and a lot of other aspects. So this is the background research and the technology we develop. And I very much like using the technology we develop in line with what Sam was saying before. And so we apply this knowledge and this technology to various different areas, from leisure cases, so using, talking about music, sound production, and to non-leisure cases, so talking about uh, hearing aids, uh, auditory interfaces for blind individuals, and etc. So I'll give you some ideas of these applications. The first one is a project called 3D TuneIn. It finished just last summer. It was a three-year European project, possibly one of the last, uh, coordinated by us, so it was a, a great adventure. Uh, within this project, we aimed at using virtual reality, in particular acoustic virtual reality, to train hearing aid users into using their hearing aid. 
Here in Gates, in the last 30 years, they, they changed radically from a simple amplifier uh, to a computer that can basically uh, select what sound you hear, adapt to the environment, and etc. But all these functionalities have never been really understood by the end users and used appropriately. So we created a series of virtual reality environments where uh, users could learn how to use their hearing aid in a safe but very realistic environment, and then transfer their knowledge to the real hearing aid and to real life scenarios. So in this project, we developed the 3D tuning toolkit, which is a free software for doing this binaural specialization thing that I was talking about before. Wait a second, I'll just show you a little bit of the interface. Uh, this is a free software, is freely available, uh, again, through GitHub or other, other platforms. And here you can just create different soundscapes, you can move your sound sources around, put them up and down, create different environments, and et cetera. And you can actually then interact with them through a mobile phone. So uh, for example, whoops, one second. I need to restart this. You can turn around the mobile phone and interact with that environment. So you can create complex environments, simulate, for example, a restaurant where I put my hearing aid, and then I try to set my hearing aid to better understand the person in front of me. Then I put the person inside in the middle of the street and they understand that the same setting doesn't work in the middle of the street. You need to change it. You need to change the configuration of your hearing aid. You understand how to do it and how to do it fast in real environments. So this is the output of this project called 3D TuneIn. We then have another project that we are starting now in collaboration with Cambridge uh, and UCL. Yes. Perfect. And it's called Bears, both ears. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the concept of cochlear implants. They're not standard hearing aids that you put on the back of your ear, but they are surgically installed. And they're digital ears. So uh, you have a, an outer receiver, and they go inside the, the, the cochlear, which is our internal ear, and transmit impulses directly to the auditory nerve. In the past, this surgery was done for one year only, because it was not really dangerous, but it wasn't always successful, so you always wanted to keep the other ear to be sure that it worked. Uh, and now we started doing it on both ears, uh, and mainly with teenagers and young people, because we saw the benefit of having two ears for, for example, localizing sound sources. Now, the complexity of the surgery is that you need to insert 128 electrodes in the cochlea, which is about two centimeters long and has about 20,000 receptors. So the way you put it in uh, has many different outcomes and results. And when you do it in both ears, you end up with having two ears that are not very well calibrated and balanced. So what we did is we used the technology we developed for the other project and created a series of applications. This is one. It's a shooting game. We tried to use different metaphors without shooting, but shooting works better, so there's nothing to do. <laughs> So here you just have a robot, you can see there. Sorry, you can't see there. You see the robot, you wear your headphones, and you hear the robot, and you shoot, and then you destroy the robot. Very simple. Uh, the more you go on, the more the robot becomes small, so you don't see it anymore very well, and at a certain point, it disappears. And all you do is rely on the auditory sense. So you keep going around like this and shoot at robots. But the more you do it, the more you learn to balance and reconfigure your auditory system in order to, to balance the left and right signal and localize sound sources. And what we are very interested in is how then you transfer the knowledge you acquired in virtual reality into the real world. So if you become better at this game, do you actually use better your cochlear implants? Are you actually at better to localize sound sources, and as a consequence, understand speech in complex environments. So this is another interesting project. And the final one is a little bit more leisure. It's called Pluggy. And in this case, we're looking at cultural heritage, digital heritage, and in particular, sonic narratives. So we're looking at using audio and immersive audio to integrate the sort of uh, digital heritage that you can have from the visual point of view, but also to create a new type of heritage that is only acoustic based. So in this case, we've created this platform. Anyway, the concept here is that you simply import uh, audio in the web platform and create some navigable soundscapes. So you simply drag and drop, now it does work, and you call this ciao, you add the source, and you switch it on. And as you can see, the source appears here. I can add another one, and I call it hello, hello, add the source, and here it appears. So then you can link this and you can navigate with your mouse or with a mobile phone around the different sound sources. You can create complex soundscapes, link them with your mobile phone and the GPS navigation, and just simply create complex interactions with multiple sound sources, all again for uh, 
headphone playback. So this is another application that we have created using the same type of technology that I explained before. So in brief then, these are some of the things we have done. Other things that we are interested in exploring more and we are starting exploring more is the concept of acoustic augmented reality. Ooh. Sorry, there we go. So while you wear a headphones, you're generally isolated from the outside environment. Can we create a pair of headphones that is acoustically transparent so that you can interact with your normal environment but at the same time be transmitted some virtual sound and actually not be able to distinguish between the two. And this is one PhD project we are working at. Uh, we are working at, with hearing aid companies to try to understand how we can evolve from traditional hearing aids to the concept of hearing devices. So mobile phones using iWatch or, or smartwatch or other devices. So not the old concept of a hearing aid that you put here, but sort of a, a novel era of hearing devices actually. Something more general that can still help people to hear better. And why not also help people that already hear very well to hear even better, which is a very interesting concept. We are working on the concept of acoustic feedback and data sonification. So how can we use the, the sound, the auditory stream to uh, understand, better understand large data sets. And this is actually a very interesting area, the area of, of data sonification, most of all now that everybody talks about big data. And finally, 3D telecommunications. How many of you have had a Skype call with 15 people? It's very, very difficult to be able to communicate all together. Why not creating some virtual reality environment where we can all simulate different positioning of the different speakers and possibly better understand and interact with the rest of uh, the, the people that you're talking to. So this is the theme, the team. Actually, we're not so many. We just used the 360 video and we just walked on the back. So we looked a bit double than, than the number we are. Uh, but we'll be very happy to give some demos. It's difficult with sound without giving demos, but uh, you need to listen to a pair of headphones. So please come to talk to me and come to visit us and try some of the things we do.